The DCU is officially here. Spoilers, minor spoilers for the first two episodes of Creature Commandos ahead. Hey everyone, this is Digital Charcuterie. Thanks for stopping by. If you are a fan of or looking forward to the upcoming future of the DCU and Creature Commandos, hit that subscribe button because we're going to talk about it here as much as we can. And to death. And to speaking of death, R.I.P. Rick Flagg Jr., of course, it's been two years officially as the new DCU will let us and inform us into that information that the new DCU takes place two years after the Suicide Squad, after the events of the Suicide Squad, two years have passed, and Rick Flagg Sr. is still emotional about the passing of his son, who I suspect is going to be, have a little minor flashback role in Peacemaker Season 2. Everyone, this is the review of Creature Commandos. No, put your arm, your gun down. Episodes 1 and 2, and I gotta tell you, being in Canada sucks balls. It sucks major balls, because it's not here. You can't watch it in Canada. It just, you know, you just can't watch it. Well, that sucks. So... I reached out to a few friends and someone was graciously kind enough to send me their screener copy of episodes one and two. And so I got to watch the episodes and it was a slog to get them. But I got to say, I really enjoyed watching the episodes. It was kind of exactly what you expect this series to be, an animated version of The Suicide Squad. The humor was very similar to Suicide Squad, The Suicide Squad and Peacemaker Season 1. It wasn't identical in any respect. You see that James Gunn has, you know, different avenues of exploring, uh, you know, musical taste and also uh, humor, but it's still very much the same. It felt kind of like, you know, a brother or stepbrother to The Suicide Squad. This was like, it felt almost like a continuation. This could have even been called The Suicide Squad 2. Like, it could have been Adventures of the Suicide Squad, but obviously after the events of Peacemaker Season 1, Amanda Waller can no longer use those outlets anymore, so she's got to use monsters instead. And I love that. they Right off the bat, like James Gunn said leading up to this, like, hey, 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 we're going to kind of get things out of the way, establish what is canon, what isn't canon in the new DCU, and right away with Waller and Flag, you kind of understand, okay, things that happen in the Suicide Squad are canon, things that happen in Peacemaker are canon, they get it out of the way, they let, they inform you, like, hey, you saw this, that's real, that information is going to carry through. Now, not all of it, obviously, is important enough to matter, but Rick Flagg Sr., having a son, Rick Flagg Jr., obviously is one of those cases. And so they brought that forward. And I think it's going to be little things like that. Like, don't worry too much about what's going to connect and what's not. It's going to be the little details such as that, where, like, a death of a family member, especially a child, the son, would greatly impact and affect the father, and that's going to play out. And I, it makes me really excited for Peacemaker Season 2. But this is about Creature Commandos. I want to hear what you guys thought of these episodes in the comments down below. Please let me know. Look forward to reading and replying to all of them and having a conversation over the next few weeks about this series and about the future of the DCU. I still believe... Like, this was a great introduction into what James Gunn is, is cooking over there and Peter Safran is cooking, but also at the same time, it's kind of separate in a lot of ways as well, right? Like, Superman, don't say legacy, Superman is going to be the one that's really, really, really going to kickstart all of this, but it's really cool to see the groundwork being laid in this series that, you know, is going to have some eyes on it, no Canadian eyes, at least not now, no Canadian eyes, is going to have eyes on this series, and it's kind of like a slow... Uh, introduction into the DCU, so I really, really love that. But without any further ado, let's get into it. My first opening thoughts of episodes one and two of Suicide of, of Creature Commandos. And my opening thoughts of episode one and two of Creature Commandos. The plot kicks off with this team up of these crazy characters to protect a princess, but there's more to the mission than meets the eye. Manipulation, secrets, and hidden agendas abound, which is exactly what James Gunn does best. Let's get right into the music. It's another trademark of James Gunn and Creature Commandos does exactly that. The soundtrack leans heavily on obscure tracks, uh, many of which are foreign language rock and pop songs that gives the show a unique vibe and feels both fresh and quintessentially Gunn. One of Gunn's strengths is the emotional heart of his films, right? All of his films have great characters with great heart, and you root for these characters, even, even if they are villains or unlikable creatures, uh, such as Creature Commandos. He creates a bizarre, often grotesque characters, and then somehow makes you care deeply about them. I'll admit, 
It takes a little while to get to this point, but he does hit his stride and the emotional heart of Creature Commando shines through. Each episode includes flashbacks to one of the team members past giving us glimpses into their lives before they become part of Task Force M. These moments add depth to the characters. We'll go right into like things that worked and didn't work. The, every episode features a flashback and you get to meet more and more of the characters in the Creature Commandos and who they are and what they represent. And I thought that was very strong. However, sometimes it felt like it was affecting the pacing of the series just a little bit. I wish they had a little bit more time to deal with some of the characters, at the aftermath of some of the characters' backstories than what we were getting. There's a lot of buildup. What are we going to get? I, you know, it makes me want to watch more, obviously, but with the shorter run times and the short length of the season, we don't know exactly what we're going to get. And the promise of these characters in future DCU uh, roles and live action animation and all that fun stuff. You, I wish we got a little bit more, and maybe we will coming up, who knows? But in these episodes, I was always, I felt just like a little, like, oh, and okay, that wasn't exactly it. That isn't to say I didn't like the show, obviously. I really enjoyed it. I think if you're a fan of James Gunn and what James Gunn has brought to uh, his films in the past and now, you're going to enjoy the first two episodes of Creature Commandos. I don't know if you're going to love them. I think it was a smart move making this in animation, though, because you can do a lot more, and these characters can obviously function a lot better in animation. I'm really, some of them I was like, oh man, I'm really anxious to see what we're going to get from them in live action. But at the same time, you know, I was really happy that, okay, this is a fun animated show, and I'm really curious to see where it's going to go from there. One thing I do want to bring up is this was a two-episode drop, right? So you have episode one, then obviously episode two, and I thought this was the right call and a perfect decision to be made. While I enjoyed episode one, I could see if that was the only episode we got, you might not be so excited for episode two. Not a whole lot happens in episode one. That's not to say nothing happens, but not a whole lot happens. It's not the most exciting of episodes either. It needs episode two to kind of conclude episode one. They're the perfect marriage of, of story and character are within those episodes. So you all, you need them both together. The, like it almost feels like they could have been one long episode at the end of the day, but instead obviously it's, it's two. So I think the right decision was made to release two episodes, one and two, on the same day. I'm curious how future episodes are going to work out. Obviously the critic response to this series has been phenomenally positive so far, but they've seen the entire thing, right? They've seen the entirety of Creature Commandos, and so they can base the review on the whole thing. So an episode that might have bothered them, they might have, you know, forgotten or negated that negative review because of the positive reception to the next episode or how it all kind of works together. So I think, like I think, like I said, like if episode one was on its own, I don't think it would be viewed as positively as it is because it is with episode two. So I think that works well. But And I am very curious, again, how are they going to go forward with this when we only get one episode next week, one episode the following week? Is that episode going to rely on the following week's episode for it to be as exciting and entertaining and informative as, as it could be? So that's just, that's probably one little... Positive and a nitpick all at once. Like, is this, how are we going here? Is it going to work out? I have faith that it will. I think at the end of the day, it's going to be great. Maybe this would have been better suited as a full series drop. Time will tell. We're going to find out at the end of the run. But until then, you know, so far I'm enjoying it. And I can't wait to see it weekly. But I, I just really, I, I think, you know, great decision to have those two together. In short, this series might not have the impact that a live action series would have had to kick off the DCU, but I think that is also what makes it stronger is that it is a soft launch into the DCU. Let everyone know, hey, we're here, we're coming for you. This And what it is, is basically this a new franchise. The Creature Commandos itself is about character, about heart, about emotion, about coming together and camaraderie. And I think ultimately that's also representative of what the DCU is going to become in years and days to days and years to come is it going to be camaraderie strong characters character development and great individual storytelling and that's what creature commandos is and i can't wait to see where it goes from here i can't wait to see how it evolves i can't wait to learn more about the characters i thought the bride was fascinating i think some of them they could have done a little bit more with uh, some of them i thought were just right let me know what you guys think in the comments down below. I'll have more videos throughout the week leading into episode two, uh, episode three, episode four, episode five, and so on. And I can't wait to see where it goes. And I can't wait to talk to you all about it. Thank you so much for watching, everybody. Give us a like and a subscribe. And until next time, you may be the master of your own universe.